Hey, Death Proof family. Welcome to the official Death Proof Fight Club podcast. I'm your host, the voice guy, Chris Hazard. You may have heard me on some of the recent Death Proof DVDs doing the commentary alongside Hutch Henry's The Captain. And even the infamous Jay Moore got in on the action. Uh, He helped us out with some commentary for Declaration of Anarchy 4. And that was uh, that was a lot of fun, uh, actually doing that uh, DVD with Hutch and Jay Moore. It was uh, that was good times. But we're not here to talk about me or the commentary. We are here to talk about the upcoming event that we have going on at the Rock Pile Sunday, June 11th. Till death do us part. VIP starts at 5:30 p.m. and 7 p.m. is when the main show starts. But really you guys should all just have VIP tickets because it's going to be just, it's going to be awesome. You guys are going to be in for a treat during the VIP portion of the show. We got the mighty minis, the mighty minis, midget wrestling. I haven't seen midget wrestling in years. I mean, that's, that's worth the price of a VIP ticket right there. But Warhead has also issued a challenge to the locker room. It's a it's a song off challenge. You have to write an original song, play an acoustic guitar, and uh, I guess the fans are going to vote who has the best song, the best original song that they uh, are presenting to the Death Proof family during the VIP festivities. We'll call it. We've also got uh, we've got the Young Blood title. That's going to be defended by Matt Grant. And he's going to be taking on Danny Orlando, who is no stranger to the Youngblood Championship. He is a former Death Proof Youngblood Champion. And he's going to he's going to uh, give Matt Grant a, a run for his money. I mean, Matt Grant, he's, uh, he's brand new. He's fresh. Uh, the fans are definitely starting to take to Matt Grant. Um... And, I mean, what's not to like? What's not to like? I mean, I enjoyed that match at Back by Popular Demand. Took me by surprise how well he was doing in his very first match. And it's not very often that your very first match uh, at any promotion is a title match. And he ends up besting Liam Worldwide and Clinton. And the way that he won it, too, was just, you know, right place, right time. Um, Liam Worldwide just wasn't paying attention. Matt Grant uh, had the presence of mind to sneak in there. One, two, three. There you have it. You've got a new young blood champion. The White Trash Circus. Oh, man. I mean, it is so great to see these guys back together. So amazing to have Matt Cash, well, White Trash Matt Cash, and the horror show Shawnee Moe back together again. Um, And I honestly think uh, that there's tag teams out there that just, uh, they don't want to take these guys on. The White Trash Circus, they're the craziest bunch of fuckers in the ring. I mean, you don't know what they're going to bring to the ring. It's always something wrapped in barbed wire. Always. And how do you you defend against a guy like the horror show Shawnee Moe who takes objects wrapped in barbed wire, puts them on the head of his opponent, and headbutts them himself into the head of his opponent with barbed wire wrapped around it, basically causing himself to to bleed, uh, and he just doesn't care. He has he has no qualms about uh, about opening himself up. Like it's crazy. I don't know. Shawnee Mo, Matt Cash couple of nutcases we love you guys the white trash circus they have an open challenge at till death do us part and uh, so far we we haven't seen who's going to step up and step into the ring with these two but uh, i'm sure we'll find out uh, in the next less than 48 hours away from uh, from event time And I was talking about uh, Liam Worldwide as being one of the opponents of Matt Grant in the Young Blood Championship match back in Hamilton. And uh, Liam Worldwide is going to be taking on Velvet Jones. And uh, Velvet Jones, 
He claims to have some of the best dank in the city. So we know that uh, Velvet Jones will have his dank ready. And he'll be he'll be probably high as a kite. And Liam Worldwide, I don't know how he's going to respond to this. Because Liam Worldwide, is uh, he's, he's got an ego. And uh, I don't know. I don't know how the... I honestly don't... Uh, I don't know how uh, to perceive this match. It's going to be... You, you, you know what? We're just going to have to take it in as the Death Proof family ourselves and just, just witness uh, what's about to go down. Just Insane. Just Insane is going to be taking on Easy e Eric Kearney. And that's going to be a hell of a match. I mean, these two are very skilled technical wrestlers. Um, probably not going to see a lot of weapons in this match. Uh, but we are going to see some very, very technical, skillful wrestling when it comes to a match between the, the two of these guys. Looking forward to seeing that one as well. It's not, it's not just about garbage cans being smacked over people's heads. It's not just about light tubes being smacked over people's backs. It's, it's not always about you know, bleeding all over the place. Sometimes you got to have that technical aspect in there as well. And uh, I am a connoisseur of all types of wrestling. So I'm looking forward. To, I'm looking forward to it all, to be honest with you. Uh, one match in particular that I'm really looking forward to is, of course, Jesse fucking Amato. He's going to be taking on the pizza boy. That's right. Eddie Sapolucci who we all can't fucking stand. And I just, I can't believe the audacity of, uh, of Eddie Saps, to be honest. I mean, every match that uh, Jesse Amato has been in since he has returned to Death Proof, th th he's always running interference. Eddie Saps is always running some sort of interference in Jesse Amato's match. And I mean, this is why the tension is heating up between these two, and this is becoming... Um, a really heated rivalry. I mean, uh, these two are going to beat the shit out of each other. And uh, remember how I said, just insane and easy. -E, you're probably not going to see a lot of weapons. Well, I'm thinking in the uh, the Jesse Amato, Eddie Saps match, you're going to see a lot of weapons, a lot of bleeding, a lot of carnage. That is going to be the type of match um, that I. It's good. That's going to be the type of match that we're going to witness on Sunday. And it's going to be fucking crazy. And I can't wait. I can't wait. Jesse Amato, fucking stick it to Pizza Boy. For God's sakes, please just fuck this guy up. I, I want to see Eddie Sapolucci just bleed. His whole face just covered in blood, Steve Austin style. <laughs> that would truly make me happy. Eddie Saps fucking pisses me off can't fucking stand him. Anyway, we've got the Bone Crusher, Steve Brown, another fan favorite, a favorite of mine and a favorite of uh, of a lot of you as well. But, you know, he's got some he's got a cup of haters out there as well. Cup of haters, cup of haters. That's okay. They can hate all they want. But uh, I'm a huge Bone Crusher fan. And uh, he's going to be taking on Private Parts. Private Parts in a tables match. And, uh, well, we all know how tables matches go uh, when it comes to the Bone Crusher. I mean, how many tables has Steve Brown put people through? We've lost count. That's how many. Like, it's just, it's, it's going to be like, this is going to be like one more added to uh, Steve Brown's body count. I don't think it's any contest. You're probably... He's probably going to make short work of this private parts. I mean, maybe I'm selling this guy short because we haven't seen a lot of him. Get it? Private parts short? Uh, whatever. <sighs> We're also going to find out who the new co-owner of Death Proof Fight Club is going to be. We're going to find out the co-owner. I mean, it was Steve Carino. And unfortunately now, because he's been doing a lot of work he's not able to fulfill his obligation as the co-owner of death proof uh going forward and that's okay that's all right because we're leaving it in the hands of our fearless leader warhead and uh, i'm sure that 
he has gone out and found a proper co-owner. You know, somebody that, uh, you know, that could coexist with uh, with Warhead and, and make the proper decisions uh, to move Death Proof forward and to keep it as awesome as it always has been. I have faith in Warhead. I'm not even worried about this. And of course... You know, this is this is one of the uh, the huge highlights of this event, and that's going to be uh, the hip star Zach Atticus. He's going to be married to Freddie Mercurio this Sunday, and uh, I know I was I was speaking to the hip star earlier, and he's a, he's a little nervous. He's a little nervous, and he's excited. You know, he's got the butterflies going on in his stomach, so. Uh, he was actually um, supposed to be a guest on the show, but he's he's feeling a little jittery. Um, so I, I mean, I don't want to pressure him or anything like that. I, I know that he's got a lot to prepare for. I mean, this is a huge step in his life. He's he's getting married for God's sakes. I mean, this uh, this is a this is a lifelong decision here, and I and I know that the hip star is the type of stand up person that uh, doesn't want things to end in divorce. So. I know that he's going to be taking this very seriously. I wonder if uh, Freddie Mercurio is is taking it as seriously because when the proposal was made at Back by Popular Demand, uh, it seemed like Freddie Mercurio said maybe, and uh, and that that kind of struck me a little bit. He didn't say yes right away. He didn't say no. He didn't say no, but he was like, you know what? Let me mull this over a little bit, and uh, we'll go with maybe. And uh, then Zach Atticus, he was happy with that, and he danced his way. He danced his way into the uh, into the back area after that. So I guess uh, behind the scenes, after the show, or sometime down the road after Back by Popular Demand, uh, Freddie Mercurio must have said yes, and and this is what we're going to witness on Sunday at Till Death Do Us Part. So. The fans are going to bring the the wedding gifts, and uh, the, some of the fans are even going to dress up for the occasion. We'll see how many people actually do. One other thing that I wanted to mention about the uh, Jesse Amato and Eddie Saps match is that it's a casket match. How the fuck could I forget that? It's a casket match. So, I think... Uh, you know, well, the Death Proof family, including myself, we're hoping to see Jesse Amato put this fucking baby to bed and just stuff Eddie Saps in a casket, close the fucking door, and be done with it. See you later. Take him to the cemetery, bury him six feet under, and maybe we'll never see the pizza boy again. He doesn't deliver anyway. I never get my pizzas, ever. I've ordered so many. What's the matter with you, Eddie? Sa- How are you still in business? I just, I don't, I don't understand. Deliver my pizza on time next time. Jeez. Fucking it. Fuck you, Eddie Saps. Can't stand him. Fucking Eddie Saps. All right. Well, um, I've run down pretty much the entire card for Sunday. Uh, now it's time to have some guests on the show. death proof family we are about to have our very first guest on the death proof the first ever death proof podcast uh so let me introduce to you guys right now a man who is no stranger to putting people through tables the bone crusher steve brown hey steve welcome to the podcast it's only fitting that i'd be the i'd be the first one you know what i mean oh absolutely man no you, you gotta be yeah. the. You gotta have a premier guest on the very first guest, right? Yep. Well, you know, I'm the original. That's for original, so that's no right. other choice, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So, what I wanted to talk to you about uh, was, or is, I should say, uh, tomorrow night at the Rock Pile, till death do us part. Uh, you are in another tables match um, against Private Parts. Now. I've seen pictures of uh, of this private parts uh, individual, and 
I gotta say, he's he doesn't look uh, up to Steve Brown esque stature, man. Like, basically, how many bones is the Bone Crusher gonna break tomorrow night? Well, that I could never give a definite number, but I can guarantee you one thing that's gonna break is gonna be the table when I put him through it. Like, what is this guy even thinking? <laughs> that's all I gotta say. Like. I have no yeah. idea. Like I looked at, like I said, I looked at this match, and I'm like, why would this private parts individual even want to step into a ring with the Bone Crusher, Steve Brown, in a tables match? I mean, that is your signature match. You've broken more tables. You've put people through more tables than anybody in Death Proof. And this guy, all of a sudden, says, "Hey, I think it's a good idea to get into a match with the Bone Crusher, Steve Brown, in a fucking tables match." Well, he clearly, I. Uh... Maybe he just wants to try to make a name for himself, and he's going to try to use me to do it. You know, uh, I'm not. I'm not going to claim that I'm undefeated in death proof. You know, but tables is what I do. You know, and uh, he, he's probably smoking something. I don't know. Uh, I don't want to speculate or anything, but the fact of the matter is, if I have, if I'm not putting someone through a table, I'm usually missing them and putting myself through a table. I haven't been physically put through a table too many times in death proof. And, uh, you know, hey, they say anyone's got a snowball chance in hell, but I don't think he, uh, he's got the chance at all. Yeah, but it, it just looks to me like, like how the hell is he even going to... Well, I mean, probably the only way that he would be able to put you through the table is if he sets it up in the corner because there ain't no way in hell he's he's picking you up and putting you through one, that's for sure. But, I mean, in my mind, it's just like how many seconds is it going to take for the Bone Crusher to just drive this guy through a table? It's going to be fucking crazy. Yeah, well, you know, think back to uh, back in Hamilton, me and Viking. Uh, we did two tables matches that night. Uh, the first one we did... It didn't last very long, and I was the winner, obviously. So I don't know what to say to private parts. Uh, sorry, make sure your will and everything's taken care of. Like, I don't know. Make sure your life insurance is in order. Make yeah, sure you. I hope I. I hope he uh, his family's not watching because could be tough for them to watch. Yeah, I was going to say, make sure you've kissed your girlfriend, make sure your your mom and dad have, have gotten their hugs and stuff like that, because we may never see this guy again after Sunday night. Yeah. You know, you got to give you got to give the kid credit, you know? Oh, he's... Coming, coming in and, and wanting to uh, take on the big dog. And I'm not talking about Roman Reigns either. I'm talking about Steve Brown. He's, and, uh, he's got balls. Yeah, that's the one thing that we know. I, you know... I'm not. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not. I, I may sound overconfident, but I'm not taking him lightly because you know I have been shocked before. You know, any like I said, anybody's got a chance. So you know, yeah. I all just... I can do is my best, and what I do best is put people through tables. So I know it might be a long night for me. Might be a very short night. Oh, man. Well, it, it all depends in my mind, like, how much pain do you want to put this guy through before you actually smash him through a table? Uh, let's see. It might be long. It might be short. Uh, who knows, man? All I know is tomorrow night at the Rock Pile, I'm hoping to see the Bone Crusher put this private parts individual through a table and bend him in half like a pretzel. That's what I'm hoping to see. You know what? That's what I'm hoping for, too. I'm pretty sure a good majority of people are, uh, are hoping for that. You know, when it comes to the rock pile, I've been there since first death for show there. You know, uh, I've been recently saying it's the house that I built. I've probably performed there just as much as uh, anyone else, if not more. And, you know, something about the death proof crowd or just the vibe in the rock pile in general, you know, always gets me jacked up and, you know. Regardless, it's going to be fun. Yeah, you've got a pretty solid record at the Rock Pile, and I mean, I, I hate to bring this up, but uh, when I was watching the uh, the triple threat match uh, between yourself and Ethan Page and Tarek, I was uh, as shocked as anybody 
when uh, Tarek got the pin on you, I was like, I was blown away. I could not fucking believe it. Like, honestly, I was shocked. You know what? You know, no one can be unpinnable, you know, and uh, it was a long time. I think at least six years since I like had been pinned in death proof. So that's a pretty damn good record. It was a tough, it was a tough pill to swallow, but you know, look at, look at who I got beat by. He's the champ right now. That's right. So, yep, exactly. If you're going to get beat by anyone. It's good to get beat by the best. And I was in there with the current champ and a former champ. So, yeah, I'd say that I uh, tried my best. You were you were in good company. I was really uh, every. I think everybody was really hoping to see you come out on top. Unfortunately, Tarek, uh, he's uh, a very wily opponent, and uh, he just he just figures out how to how to get those wins. And he's a high flyer too. Like he can air Tarek every time he goes from one turnbuckle to the center of the ring with a flying elbow. It's uh, it's really crazy to see, but uh, but we're not here to talk about uh, losses. We're here to talk about what's coming up on Sunday and tomorrow night at the Rock Pile. The Bone Crusher, Steve Brown, he's going to be putting on a show and hopefully putting some chump named Private Parts through another table. Most definitely. All you right. Know? Yeah, man. I'm just I'm looking I'm going to say something right now. Yep. I'm going to say something right now. I don't mind talking about losses because... That's how you become better. You adapt. You learn. You move on. You know, it's it's losing the tough pill to swallow. But you know, in the words of Rocky, it's not how many times you get beat down. It's how many times you can keep getting beat down and keep coming back. And it's been a while since I've been in the death proof ring. And uh, I, I assure you, it's going to be a good time tomorrow night in the Rock Pile. Tomorrow night. 5 30 p.m get your vip tickets or if you can't make it for 5 30 i don't know what's wrong with you but seven o'clock is uh, gonna be the bell time of the main event we will see you there tomorrow night till death do us part thank you very much for coming on the podcast again steve uh we will see you tomorrow night yes and remember you always remember your first all right <laughs> yeah ex exactly and i think private parts is going to remember his first tomorrow my next guest on the first ever death proof podcast is none other than the hip star himself and he's no stranger to podcasts zach atticus Greetings. ladies and gentlemen how you doing zach oh great you can just uh call me hip star uh i would like to say also happy international portuguese day by the way Beautiful oh day. obrigado I'm not Portuguese. Um, I just know that that means thank you in Portuguese. Oh, neither am I. But I mean, you know, cultural cultural awareness is big in the world, so it's very important. Um, so, I mean, first off, I want to ask: uh, can 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 I swear? Absolutely, yeah. Can I swear on this? It's a fucking death proof okay. podcast. Um, of course you can. Well, this is absolute bullshit, honestly, and I'm sick of it. Um, it took forever, by the way, for this to be even approved by the the, 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 the death proof board, the commissionary, you know, like I knew they didn't want to do it at first. All right. I was feuding with uh, Freddie Mercurio forever for like what, like a year now. Right. It's been about a year. Yeah. They, they didn't even want to do it. Right. So, and, 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 Fair enough, like, new ideas people want to shut down right away. And I just think that's just ignorant, you know, like, how closed-minded the world is right now. And I just, man, I, I, I hate it. But uh, finally, I've come in a very healthy place in my life. I am happy. I found my, my self-enlightenment. And I, I have to say, like, tomorrow, Sunday, June 11th, I'm going to be a changed man. You're getting I, married. I'm getting married. I'm getting married. You're getting married. It's, it's yeah. This is it's huge. A beautiful time, and I, I, I shouldn't treat it with bitterness. But this just goes to prove how pro wrestling nowadays they don't like new ideas. And you know, like I, for people who just want the norm and just want guys in black tights and black beards, I say go over to New Brunswick. All right, because <laughs> times are changing. 
the world is open-minded. It's a beautiful time to live. It's even more beautiful to be at Death Proof tomorrow because you're going to see history. It's history, right? It will be history. It's, it's yeah, history it'll definitely. Me, be, like, it's it's a first. game changer. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think that this is uh, that this has ever been done uh, at any wrestling promotion. Uh, same sex marriage uh, happening well, tomorrow. Well, wrestling has tried marriages before. Yeah, but they did it in a very like d- discriminatory way. I mean, Billy and Chuck was just kind of an insult to the LGBTQA community all over the world, and I, I don't appreciate that. But I mean, tomorrow, I really hope, Mister Hazard, uh, you're going to be there. I hope you bring out some uh, some friends too, because this is going to change their life. Honestly, I think it's safe to say. Well, I mean, your life is going to be changed forever because, I mean, you know, from from what I know from the hip star is, uh, you know, when, when, when you set out to do something, you're all in. Like, you're not expecting uh, to get married and then maybe a year down the road be a statistic and one of those 50-50 uh, people that get divorced later on. I mean, you're, you're committed to this. I'm going to have to be. Honestly, like, I, I've seen... Especially my parents' generation. I, it, it, it was so every, people were getting married in their like early twenties because the you know, pay, minimum wage was just huge back then. People were buying houses, no problem. And then you know, after like what five, six years, then you're like, you know, I'm not achieving my dreams. What do I do now? And then bam, divorce was an easy scapegoat. We can't afford that anymore, man. I can't afford to like de- dedicate half my things to this. So yeah, I have to go all in. I have to, because honestly, I don't own anything. I barely own anything. So, I mean, I have to dedicate myself here. And it's true. Thank you for uh, the compliment, by the way, that I do go all in when I, when I, when I dedicate myself to something I, I truly put my heart to. That's true. I do. But, I mean, man, I, this is my time. This year especially, I got, the, I got like... These many bookings, so many right now in one month. Yeah, I got a big month, man. And I mean, I got to, I got to make it worth something because I've been around like like twelve years, bro. I mean, nobody was talking about me when I was like the first North American match against Kushida in Welland six years ago. Nobody even knows that existed, and that's that's ignorant. I like, I mean, now I have to change. I'm doing it for the great of the environment yes. and mankind. I, uh, I just like I just in the end of it all, man. I just I just want to be known for that guy who just tried. That's all I want. It's not hard to ask. No, absolutely not. I mean, you you gotta you Thank gotta you. have a, a goal in life, and if you don't try then you're never mm-hmm. going to achieve it, right? You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. Um, now, one, one thing that I wanted to touch upon, I, I was listening to uh, to what you said earlier on. Now, you said that you really have nothing to bring to this marriage. You said you have nothing, right? Does that mean um, Freddie Mercurio should be signing a prenup? Is that, uh, is that what I'm led to believe? <laughs> well, uh, I don't own anything, but I mean, like, my heart, my dedication is there. I mean, I, 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 I like to think, even though I come off as a heel to many wrestling crowds, my heart's still in a good place. So, I mean, I, my energy is there. And I, what I am going to offer is my dedication, my soul, and my body. And I think that's enough. But, you know, on paper... Eh, I, whatever you can do whatever you want but I mean I, I sure sure but you're kind of scaring me now that I'm considering that actually yeah I was just going to ask you like how are you um, how are you preparing your yourself for tomorrow like are you are you jittery are you nervous are you excited like what's what's going on in the head of Zach right or sorry the hip star right now I've been uh, reading a lot of Forbes articles um uh a lot of oprah reruns um (laughs) just more of like the feelings of uh, of how you felt the emotions that um that people will go through on their wedding day and 
I mean, especially my, myself, I, I work in hospitality. I work at a hotel that, that, that sees many um, weddings, and we, we, we host them here as well. And, I mean, on the, the, the term bridezilla is true. It really is. And when I, when I have to deal with these women on their wedding day, they're fucking bitches, man. They're just, like, angry and just mean and just so negative spirited and who wants to be like that on the loveliest day of their life so i am focusing on going in with a positive energy positive vibes from the city to the tribes and just making sure that the entire crowd around me feels that as well so i can be in a positive environment you know what i mean now have you, you know what i mean absolutely you know I, I completely agree with you you're, you're going into this uh, with the right attitude absolutely um, now the other question that I have for you is: Have you guys uh, have you guys picked um, a wedding party, like a best man or a, a maid of honor, or have you have you picked anybody to stand mm. up with you? Um, well, I was kind of hoping that you wouldn't bring that up. I kind of asked you not to bring that up, uh, oh. but you did anyways. Um, so uh, that, that's hey, the prof- professionalism of your interview, whatever, man. But uh, since it's up, hey. Um, yeah, I've asked many close friends to be there for me, and they have chose to not support me during this time. It was supposed to be the biggest night of my life. Even my own co-host of one of the most successful Ontario podcasts tonight on Hip Search Tonight, uh, brought to you by 1-800-NUDA-GIMMICK, the original 1-800-NUDA-GIMMICK.COM. Um, Jay Moore, he even won't be there. Yeah, so, I was listening. I mean, it's kind of insulting um i it took me a while to get over that and even my true flesh and blood father too sweet pistol pete can't even be there because he has to work early in the next morning the next morning so um it's a sad time but i think this is a true symbolic time to be independent and go through one of the biggest moments by myself and I think that's what I need to do, you know? That's that's pretty courageous of you. Very brave, uh, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very brave. Now now when you when you first uh when you first made your debut in Death Proof, um I, I think uh pretty much the entire family couldn't stand you, pretty much hated your guts. Uh now that you've had it's natural. Yeah, now but now that you've uh you've been to or uh, you've been part of a few of the Death Proof events, do you find that people are uh, more accepting of you than they were before. You, are you getting uh, are you getting people to uh, sort of go over to the hip star side? Well, listen, and I've never been good at first impressions. I'm terrible at first impressions, actually. I'm I'm the worst. But I mean, once you get to know me, then I kind of grow on you. You know, like like a fungus or you know some other healthier things like plants kale um but i mean i I, they got to know me right and that's what it was and that's when they really opened up to me honestly i'm never going to appeal to that crowd and i accept that but i just kept showing up even if i wasn't booked kept going there and they got to know me more and they opened up and it, it left more room for more beautiful beautiful opportunities like that really dangerous fucking concussion of a match against Viking. I mean, which was absolutely sick, by the way, at uh, Lucha Proof Dos. What a fucking sick, sick as match! In like, yeah, as in like my head hurt sickly. No, no, the next I, day. I, I, no I didn't care about that. I, I was just, I was just saying the match was sick itself. <laughs> like you guys put it all on the line, right? Like it was a great match. Yeah, yeah, but I mean. I wouldn't do it for the Hogtown episode after. That's not why I did it. I did it for that crowd. So I hope they recognize that, and I think that they uh, appreciated my art afterwards, you know? You know? Well, I was there. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a great match. Um, probably one of the best I've seen from the Hipstar. And, um, hey... You know what? I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna end it there, and I'm gonna say, hey, you know what? Good luck on uh, on your wedding tomorrow. I'm gonna I'm gonna be there, so I'll be witness to uh, what's going on Beautiful. tomorrow night uh, at the Rock Pile. Till death do us part. Fitting title. 
Um, we're going to be there tomorrow it's night. It's going to be a unique experience. The first time in independent wrestling, fans bring their own wedding gifts. That's right. Bring okay? them gifts. I, I was uh, I was talking to somebody earlier that said uh, Freddie Mercurio he's still stuck like in the eighties he's looking for a VCR as a wedding gift so if anybody can just dig up a VCR from your basement or your attic and and bring that as a present for Freddie Mercurio uh, that, that that'll be great. Oh, that'd be great. I need mean, you need something to buy my collection off anyways because a VCR is one thing I don't own, but I have VHS tapes. So hey, I got tons of tapes and we can watch old matches of like. Early Great Baba of 1982, you know, or we can just fall asleep together while watching that. That's, that's beautiful, actually. Yeah, I think. But I, hey, I just like to say, independent pro wrestling is changing. It's a different time. We're a different time for an androgynous world. Let's have an open mind and show up to Death Proof tomorrow, where you're bound to see a very unique experience, my man. Thank you. Thank you, and have a great day. Well, oh, thank you, Hipstar, and we will see you tomorrow night at the Rock Pile. Oh, by the way, when you get a chance, visit hipstar.ca. It's a very beautiful website, so uh, I hope you check that out. And don't forget to check out uh, the Hipstar's podcast tonight on Hipstar Tonight, uh, brought to you by 1-800-NEED-A-GIMMICK, the original 1-800-NEED-A-GIMMICK.com. And uh, don't forget to give to the Heart and Soul Foundation as well. Ah. Uh, beautiful man you you did that without me even having to tell you thank you have a great day man cheers well all right guys um my next guest man i don't even know why i have to bring this next guest on but he friggin' said like if i don't have him on the podcast that i'm in violation of some fucking code and this guy's like he like gives head to the athletic commission or something like that i don't know what his official title is i just know that uh, his name is bill chase and he told me that i gotta put him on the the podcast so um uh bill chase are you there yeah i'm here <laughs> and first off it's the director of health and safety of the ontario athletic commission the very proud director of health and safety thank you oh okay well Health and safety, great. I do not, I do not give fellatio to anybody. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That, that's what, uh, that's what somebody told me. That's why I was. Uh, that's why I mentioned that. So you don't, you don't, you're not the head, the head giver to the athletes and and whatnot. Oh, that that, that is real, real, real uproarious, real, real hilarious. <laughs> that's Kevin Hart here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, Bill, uh, so you've asked uh, you've asked to be on the podcast. Uh, you're going to be at Till Death Do Us Part uh, tomorrow night. What uh, what exactly is your role? Well, people are misinterpreting what I'm trying to do. I am not trying to kill Death Proof per se. Uh-huh. I'm trying to make the promotion better. Uh huh. And how are you doing and that, Michael? Well, basically by making sure everybody's health and safety is in order. This is not a crusade against hardcore wrestling. This is just a crusade for the greater good. That's all. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, greater good. Gotcha. Do do you disagree? Disagree with what? That the commission is only here doing what's right for for the promotion. Hey, we're just trying to make things even better for the Defru family. Um... Yeah, uh, like, uh, there's like there's weapons and whatnot. I know that people get hit with with chairs and they get hit with with light tubes and everything like that. And that is pretty much what what the Death Proof family is uh, is there to see. And it, I'm all for the Death Proof family, despite their you know consistently low IQs, having fun. I'm all for wrestling fans having fun, but the things that have to be done within the guidelines yeah. and restrictions of the commission. Yeah. And uh, what's what? Sorry, man. What, what's the commission again? I don't understand. What 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 exactly do they do? We oversee wrestling events across Ontario, yeah, and make sure everything is sorted out within the restrictions of our codes. Death Proof has failed to do so on our last several shows. Now we have kept quiet several like for for several years now. Uh-huh. 
We could, like I, I've only been part of the commission now for just over a year and a half. She would have stayed quiet. Yeah. Yeah. And to be honest with you, I I couldn't take it anymore. And I hired the two best collectors in the business, uh-huh. Nick Watts and Tyler Hill. Yeah, a couple of bitches. Yep. Now they're. That's unnecessary. Come on. <laughs> they are two of the best. Now they're, these aren't just two pieces of muscle. I've said this time and time again. That these two men are the best at what they do. Not just at collecting for the commission, but they're the mm-hmm. best at what they do in the ring. Nobody is more maniacal than Nick Watts. It's not just a fancy gimmick. He really lives up to it. So and Tyler you, Hill is such a fiery, intense competitor. So do you guys have like uh do you guys have like a, a telemarketing center where you, you call these guys and you're like, Give us our money, give us our money, we we need to get this money for the fines. What is that is that what you guys do? <laughs> no, 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 no. We do everything in person. We are not some coward to hide behind a phone or a microphone. Well, you're right about one thing. You guys don't hide behind phones. Exactly. I'm glad you see, maybe you're finally starting to get it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, don't get me wrong. We are only doing these things when we are forced to do them. We don't just go looking for trouble. It's right in front of us. When people like Shawnee Mo are not living up to their codes, or especially... The enabler of misbehavior, Warhead, are causing trouble. We do something in person. We just don't go phoning them up. We just don't go sending them letters or emails. Uh, I, I tried contacting Warhead several times in the last several months. He ignores my calls. I, I, I tried to not embarrass him at his show. We tried not to make things worse for him. You embarrassed hey, yourself. We were being nice about it at first. What, uh, so- we were being nice. What, what you know? What, what type of things are you are you looking out for uh, tomorrow night at Till Death Do Us Part? Well, that remains to be seen. I mean, there's a lot of things that we're very cautious about. Mm-hmm. Obviously, knowing that White Trash Circus is going to be there, Shawnee Mo, previous violator, Matt Cass, someone we've had our eye on. Oh boy! So, so basically, what you're going to say, what you're trying to tell me is, uh, the bullies of the Ontario Givers of Head Commission are looking out for Shawnee uh, Moe and Matt Cash, and uh, they're in violation of some sort of weird code that you guys have just made up? Is that is that what I'm led to believe? We make up nothing. It's straight from the book. Oh, it sounds no, made up I, to I'll me. I'll tell you this, too. No, 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 no it, is, it is. It is. It is not made up. It is straight from the book. Now, 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 now here's the thing, Mr. Hazard, and you need to realize this, okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm looking up and down this card, yeah. and I've seen a lot of potential violators who I've had my eye on in the past. Guys like Jesse Amato. Uh, Guys like Velvet Jones. Velvet Jones's practices are a little questionable. Now, yeah. now but here's the thing now, this is not, I don't get me wrong. This is a great card. Stacked. Top to bottom. Mm. It is one of the best cards that Death Proof has ever put together. But he, here's the thing, where is Nick Watts? Where's Tyler Hill? They prove they've more than proven themselves in a death proof ring. Where are they? I thought that they were doing the head thing with you with you. That, that, isn't that what this is all about? But again, this is, they don't just work for me as collectors. They are. I want to see them succeed in the ring. I want them to show in the ring from bell to bell what they can do as well. Uh-huh. But I think Warhead knows what they're really about, and he's intimidated by it. Uh-huh. Yeah, he knows we mean business. I don't. Yeah, business. I don't. I don't think. I don't think anybody is really intimidated by you. And you know what? The at back by popular demand when when you guys blindsided Shawnee Mo after his match. I mean, don't don't think that he forgot about that. I mean, you guys, uh, you guys better watch your back on Sunday. Don't don't be spreading up revisionist history. We did not blindside him. We showed him what we were about. You showed him you were little bitches, is what you did. And and here's and here's another thing too, at Lucha Proof, uh, I mentioned this before, when Warhead chased me out of the building like some crazed maniac, mm. I saw the fear in his eyes, Mister <laughs> Hazard. I saw it. <laughs> yeah. It's because he knows we're on to him. He yeah. knows we're on to him. Yeah, Warhead scared of you guys. That's it. <laughs> Fuck. Oh man! And Nick Watts saw it too. He saw it too because he was there that night. Yeah, yeah. Nick Watts. Nick Watts. The maniacal Nick Watts is now a collection agent for the Ontario Head Giving Commission of Health and Safety. Um, 
And, that, and that's about uh, that's about all he's good for right now is uh, is one of Bill Chase's cronies. Unbelievable, you guys. Seriously, cronies, cronies. Where do you where do you come up with this stuff? Cronies. You do not know who Nick Watts is. Uh, I don't care. Do you know who, who Nick Tyler Watts Hill is? is? Don't care. Their reputations. Uh, now that that is why I hired him. I could have hired any schluff from the gym if I just wanted muscle. Yeah, yeah. So what? How do you like? I mean, come on. They have to be smart to uh, to be able to collect this money because they they looked pretty stupid over uh, <laughs> at Back by Popular Demand. <laughs> oh boy! No, no, no! These two are very smart, very diabolical. I didn't hire them just because of their size. I hired them because they think they they actually go out of their way to help the commission. Mm. They go out of their way to go that extra mile for us. And what commission is that again? That's why. The Ontario Athletic Commission. I am the director of health and safety. Get it right. So, like, you're like Steven Spielberg, and there's like some kind of weird casting couch thing going on, and you just you direct what's going on. Is that is that what it is? <laughs> you boy, honestly, you are what 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 did what did the what did Bobby the Brain? No, no, sorry, the late great Gorilla Monsoon uh, said a fountain of misinformation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm done. I'm done with this Bill Chase guy. Like seriously, I think I fulfilled my obligation. Uh, to have him on the podcast, you know what? I don't want to listen to this drivel and garbage anymore. Who knows what we're gonna see at the rock pile tomorrow night? But anyways, hopefully it's not a lot of Bill Chase and his cronies, Nick Watts and Tyler Hill. Moving on. Are we having a good fucking time? All right, guys. Well, that's about it uh, for the first ever Death Proof podcast. I'd like to uh, take this time now to thank all of our guests uh, that came on, except for Bill Chase. He's a dick. Um, But you know what? Guess what? We are not done yet because you guys know that at Death Proof, there's always a surprise twist. And right now, I've also got a surprise guest on the line. And that surprise guest is a fan favorite this individual made his return at a very death proof christmas back in december 2016 he has had a long-standing feud since his return with eddie sapalucci ladies and gentlemen please welcome to the first ever death proof podcast a surprise guest the blood-stained hurricane jesse fucking amato jesse Fucking great What's to have you on the show, on, man. Yeah, man. I'm so so I heard from Chad the other day that there's going to be a Death Proof podcast fucking now by you. So uh, I was stoked when you asked me earlier on in the day, and here I am. I've never done a podcast before 1 o'clock p.m., so I guess I'm going to have to start drinking early. Yeah, well, sorry to have uh, woken you from your slumber so early on a Saturday, but oh, yeah, uh, he didn't wake me from my slumber. It's at Walmart. <laughs> oh, you were at Walmart, eh? Yeah, you yeah, have to, I had to uh, chicken fingers and bacon and shit. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> that is that your that's your pre uh, till death to us part uh, meal. Uh, probably not the chicken breast, but probably bacon and grilled cheese and shit. <laughs> so, so tell us. Uh, uh, Tell us about how uh, how you're going to prepare for this casket match that you're having tomorrow night. Oh, I've already been preparing every time that stupid little fucker decides to run in and fuck me over and cost me belts and cost me good wins against guys like Rip. And I guess he didn't cost me against Josh Alexander. I could lie and say he did, but no, he didn't. Josh beat me fair and square. But then he had to be a punk ass bitch and just show up. So really, the only way that I could think of to possibly further prepare is to just try not to get excited about killing him. I think the Death Proof you know family's saying? excited about you killing him. I mean, I want to see blood. I want to see, like, I was I was talking about uh, how many weapons are probably actually going to be used in this match, and I'm hoping <laughs> that every single one of them is smashed over. Eddie Sapalucci's head, his face, his neck, his back. I want to see that bitch bleed. Well, as we all know, you know, I've danced with a couple of uh, deathmatch veterans throughout my course in Death Proof, and uh, there's one veteran that I learned a couple tricks from. 
and that was Madman Pondo. So Eddie Sapalucci, that's your only, only clue about what to expect. And even if you do figure it out, your dumbass is not going to be able to even come up with any sort of, any sort of, uh, what, what, what's the word here? Um, strategy? Any, yeah, any sort of strategy, any sort of defense against what's coming to you. Because I'm going to make sure that this time you will die. Because, let, let's face it, Chris, every time Sass has ever came into my path, He's always done it at the end of a grueling match, but I'm trying to fucking chain wrestle, because, you know, apparently I can't chain wrestle, but I'm trying to prove everyone wrong with that. But, not gonna lie, it makes me tired. Yeah, it's pretty... But, it's... And after getting slammed around, getting slammed around, last thing I want to do is get into another fight, but you know what? Fuck it. I'm glad that he did it. I'm glad that he pissed me off, because now Eddie Saps, that poor son of a bitch, He's going to have to stand toe-to-toe before the bell. And he's going to have to look straight up, straight up into my eyes. And I know for a fact he's going to have the fear of God. Well, yeah, I mean, the guy the he, guy has come out uh, pretty much every single time you've had a match. Like you said, after the match, he's been an opportunist waiting for you to be softened up so that he can come in and try to humiliate you after the fact. But everybody knows that's a bitch move. And now he's going to be facing a fresh Jesse Amato. Like he doesn't have a chance. I certainly don't think he has a chance. And what's going to be really fun is being able to scare him on the way to the ring by showing a couple of the things that I'm going to bring with me to him. But what's really going to scare him is what I'm going to have hidden hidden tucked inside of that casket. Because oh. Eddie Sabs, <clears throat> he's, too much of a, he's, too, he's too busy delivering pizzas to be able to come up with delivering the casket. So I took that upon myself, and uh, I plan on loading that awesome, awesome, awesome casket that uh, that's what has. And I'm, I'm, by the way, side note, I am stoked for this casket because while I was away there for those two years and I seen the casket when the Shawnee Mo and Matt Kasha had their casket match. Yeah. I was a little jelly, but it's all good now. Uh, Papa Proof, he takes care of me and he made sure that I got casket available just so I could destroy Eddie Sapp. Yeah, and I think I think that uh, this is the match that the Death Proof family is most looking forward to. They've been following this feud closely, as I have, and uh, you know we we can't stand Eddie Sapolucci, uh ever since the the whole Top Dollar fiasco. I mean, he just well, your, com- your commentary buddy likes him. He always calls him his buddy. I've I've been listening. Oh, okay, yeah, Hutch Henry's Hutch Henry's yeah. loves this guy. Yeah, Hutch Henry. Um. Which is honestly, I must say, though, straight up, you and Hutch, awesome commentary team. Oh, thanks, Jesse. I appreciate that. Love it. Um, You guys uh, really, really add a really special dynamic to the overall end presentation of the show, I find. And uh, just keep up the work, man. Well, man, that's... You guys are awesome. That's a huge compliment uh, coming from you, sir, and I really do appreciate that. Um, And we are looking forward... We are looking forward to your casket match tomorrow night. Do us all a favor. Put this baby to bed. Lay this guy out. Put him in the casket. Shut the door. And let's bury him six feet under and just forget about this pizza bitch. Yup, that's the plan. You know, I, I came back and to help out uh, Sean because I knew he was kind of a man down. And obviously, Pop Proof gave me a little bit of a heads up with a very surprise phone call. And, uh, Hey, I'm hers. Uh, I need you here. And me in typical Jesse Amato fashion, late as ever, showed up halfway through the match. But uh, when I walked out there, the, the one thing I'd noticed is how much and I, of a naive little prick that Zappalucci is. Because while Matt's sitting there shitting his pants, so he should have been. I mean, he knew he had to explain why he's wearing Argyle fucking sweater vest to me. But uh, Eddie Sapps, he had no idea. 
and Eddie Sapp still has no idea because he decided, like I said, he came in and cost me the death proof title. He cost me the getting the triple crown and death proof for the first time. Yeah. With the tournament young blood and actually get, getting that death proof belt. Yeah, he's but cost okay. you a lot. That, that, that's okay. Because, like I said, Eddie Sapp's. I, 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 I just cannot foresee any any circumstance where he's going to be able to even come close to coming out of the well, we'll see what uh, what Eddie Saps has up his sleeve tomorrow. I don't think it's going to be uh, good enough to beat you. And, uh, hey, we're just hoping to, to I see. I don't think Eddie Slap. Sorry, man, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, that's okay. I Go ahead. I don't think Eddie Saps has been, has been sleeping for the last week because he knows that his, uh, his uh, days are numbered here and he's reaching his final hours of his existence. So if I were him, I, I hope I didn't sleep. I hope I got to live out and enjoy every last hour of this week because deep down in the back of his head he has to know that the end is coming yep see you're looking forward to this he's probably shitting a brick so it, it's going to be two different oh, dynamics shit more than a brick <laughs> it's... that guy has shit out absolutely everything you know what he's, he's pretty much did a cleanse that he didn't mean to because he's too scared to eat <laughs> man I so, can't wait for tomorrow all, night. All he's doing, all he's doing right now, and maybe, maybe he's calling his mom. Maybe he's calling Mama Sapalucci, and and, and, that, and saying his goodbyes to her. <laughs> you know, I, I I feel bad. I feel bad for his parents. No one should ever have to bury their kid. But I'm gonna make them do it. And what's really strange is I don't feel bad about it. In the end, like I guess I kind of feel bad for them because you know I don't have a problem with them. But at the same time, the kid's so much of a prick that fucking. Someone's got to pay the fucking piper. And unfortunately, it's going to be that. You know what? I, is it possible to send his parents tickets to this show? Because I, I, it, it won't be fair if his parents can't really see his final hours live, right? Yeah, that's true. They should be there to witness his final moments. You know what? Somebody needs to get yeah. a hold of Mr. and Mrs. Sapolucci, get them some VIPs, and uh, get them out there because, uh, yeah, they need to they need to watch him go uh, go bye-bye tomorrow night. Absolutely, and at least if they get the VIP tickets and they could witness the sheer entertainment of Mid and smashing each other with folding chairs. That's what I'm looking forward to as well. I mean, this this card is going to be absolutely crazy. It's going to be awesome. If you haven't got your tickets yet, make sure you get in touch with me in the Mississauga area. We still got a couple of VIPs left. Also, uh, get in touch with Pierre out in Hamilton. Till death do us part. Tomorrow night at the Rock Pile, 5.30 p.m. is the VIP, 7 o'clock is the main show, but you don't want to miss out on the VIP, so just get a VIP ticket and be done with it. Uh, ladies exactly. and gentlemen. Oh, and then don't forget either, too, boys. Don't forget either, too. We, we, we got Zach Atticus and uh, Freddie Mercurio getting married. There's a wedding they're tomorrow. Some, uh, starter gifts. Yeah, they're going to need some starter gifts. You know, bring the presents. I heard you some know. some fans uh, some fans are going to be uh, dressing up for the occasion as well. Yeah, and uh, Freddie Mercurio, he, he even asked me. He asked me, "Do you have an old school VCR? I, I need a VCR." You know, we all know he loves Queen. Oh, for sure. Queen's pretty awesome. But Freddie Mercurio also he, he he doesn't have DVDs yet. He's kind of trapped in the '80s. So <laughs> VCR, he asked me for it. I'm going to take a look around. Somebody bring a VCR, please. Yeah, if you guys have a VCR laying around, bring it out to the rock pile. That would be a great gift. Uh, you know what? That reminds me. Like, like, I really think the hell that fuck. Damn it. My whole preparation plan's all fucked up, because now I'm going to have to clean my house and see what I can find to give this poor bastard. I can't give them empty-handed. No, you got you to bring a gift. So, so, so that, exactly. I, I'm going to try to bring them a few gifts. I want to help these guys out. I mean, it's that true, right? It's family. Absolutely. As much of a douche that fucking Atticus is, but whatever. I like Freddy. Freddy's cool. Yeah, that sweet half leg jacket. And definitely mustache of the year. Oh, the cookie duster of the year, a, absolutely. If there, if there isn't a fucking award for that at the end of the year for best mustache, then uh, I'll, I'll personally make him one. It'll be in the porn stash category as well. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get a trophy. I'll get one of those stupid fucking... Uh, you know, like those disguise glasses with the fake mustache and the glasses on it. I'll <laughs> fucking make it one like that. Fucking... <laughs> That'd be awesome. All right, Jesse. Yeah. It's been great talking to you, man. I know you got to uh, 
you got to prepare for your match tomorrow. So uh, we are going to say goodbye yeah. to the Bloodstained right, Hurricane. Boy. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm Big Chris. I'm going to have to come out and join you on commentary one of these times. Hey, man, you're more than welcome to join us at the booth anytime. Absolutely, because I really, 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 like I said, I dig your commentary. You know what? I'll even come to the booth and I'll even fucking say a word. I, I, I just want to experience it because, like, what you guys do is pure magic, and uh, I can't stress it enough. So, man, I've never got a chance to tell you this before. So, while I'm on the podcast, I can hijack it and put your ass over because I know for a fact that you're went over everybody that uh, everybody that that's proof has been presenting well, I'm trying to put forward but uh, you got to give yourself some credit brother pat yourself on the back and you know what? I don't, I'm not even gonna let you get uh, hang me up on me until you're actually uh, until you actually say I am Chris Hazard I'm the fucking man listen you heard it from Jesse Amato you heard it from Jesse fucking Amato I am Chris Hazard and I am the man. You heard it right here. Yeah. And Hutch is a bitch. And Hutch. And Hutch. I'm going to make him cry. You know what? Maybe we should, like, I think we should hit him with a chair or something. Just maybe knock some sense yeah, into we him. Yeah, you, you know what? You know what? I should take Hutch. I should put Hutch in the casket and bring him to the ring. And I use Hutch as a weapon. That would be amazing. That's what his only fan. That's right. My God, that would go Maple over so Joy well. Styles. April Joey Styles and call it on your own? Oh, absolutely. You think you're up for that? I'm, I'm okay, Chris. Okay, cool, let's do it. I'm okay. Chris fucking Hazard. I mean, come on now. <laughs> you are Chris fucking Hazard. That a boy. You know it. Of course I can do that shit. You're I can carry it on my own. <laughs> All right, Jesse. <laughs> Dude, this oh, has been sorry, awesome. But... Uh, thank you very yeah. much uh, for being a part of the podcast here today. And, um, oh, absolutely, brother. And good luck, uh, good luck with your match tomorrow, even though you don't need it. <laughs> well, I might need a little bit of luck because, like, I don't want to kill him too quickly. With a little bit of luck, I'll be able to drag this out a bit and really make him suffer. That's what everybody's so, hoping. I'm, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll take that little bit of luck. That's cool. Awesome. You have a fantastic uh, rest of your Saturday. Go uh, do whatever you have to do to get prepared for tomorrow, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow at the Rock Pile. For the casket match versus Eddie Sapolucci. Absolutely. Have a good one, boys. And uh, for everyone listening out there, I'm going to say it once. Death proof. Fuck yeah! Everyone said fuck yeah. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Awesome. All right, Death Proof family. I hope you enjoyed listening to the first ever Death Proof podcast. Man, we are gearing up. For one hell of an event tomorrow night at the Rock Pile till death do us part. If you haven't got your tickets yet, make sure to get in touch with me, Chris Hazard, the voice guy, out in the Mississauga area. Or if you're in the Hamilton area, get in touch with Pierre. We will see you tomorrow night, 5.30 p.m. at the Rock Pile. <laughs>